Hey everybody, welcome to the second uh, guided assignment. So chapter two guided assignment. Uh, this one is just gonna step us through a bunch of transactions, except now that we've learned how to journalize transactions, we're gonna journalize them instead of just uh, show how they affect the accounting equation like we did in chapter one. So uh, my process for when I journalize transactions is to sort of um, just identify what's happening in each transaction. So let's start with transaction A. Raphael Macy transferred cash from a personal bank account to an account to be used for the business in exchange for common stock. So I would say, okay, this guy's putting money into the business. Uh, so his cash account in the business is going to increase and his common stock account is going to increase. And then because I'm doing a journal entry, I have to, I guess, translate those activities uh, over to, uh, to journal type entries. So an increase to cash, I would have to say, what type of account is cash? It's an asset account. And asset accounts increase with a debit. So my debit entry is gonna be, an in, is gonna be cash of 17,500. And then my credit entry is going to be my common stock account. Why? Because common stock accounts increase there, it's an equity account and that increases with a credit. For B, he purchased supplies on account for $2,300. So again, we're gonna have our supplies increasing. And since it's on account, we're not, uh, he didn't purchase it for cash. We'll have our accounts payable increasing. So supplies is an asset, so it increases with a debit. and accounts payable is a liability, which increases with a credit. C, earned sales commissions, receiving cash of 13,300. So again, my cash is gonna go up and cash is an asset, so that will increase with a debit. And then my sales commissions will also go up. Sales commissions is a revenue and that increases with a credit. For D, he paid his rent on office and equipment for the month for $3,000. So in this case, uh, my rent expense is gonna go up 3,000 and my cash is gonna go down. So expenses always increase with a debit and cash, which is an asset, always decreases with a credit. On E, we pay the creditor on account 1150. So when we pay a creditor, that means our accounts payable is gonna go down and our cash is gonna go down. So accounts payable is a liability. So liabilities decrease with a debit and cash is an asset and cash decreases with a credit. For F, we pay dividend, dividends of 1800. So dividends increase with a debit. And if we pay the dividends, then our cash is going down and cash, which is an asset, decreases with a credit. For G, we paid our automobile expense. I'm not sure what they mean by including rental charge, but don't worry about it. So we paid our automobile expense of 1800, no, 1500, and miscellaneous expense of 400. So expenses always go up with debits. And then our cash is going down and assets always go down with credits. See on this one, we have three entries, uh, but they still balance. H paid office salaries of $2,800. So expenses always go up with debits, debits. And then our cash is going down. And that always goes down with a credit. And then finally, 
determined that the cost of supplies used was $1,050. So whenever we use up supplies, that's gonna create a supplies expense and expenses always increase with the debit. Uh, and then our actual supplies asset is going down, meaning we've used up those supplies and assets decrease with the credit. So there we go, we could check it if we want to. Hopefully I did it right. Looks like I did, that's a good sign. So there's the first section is we journalize them. So once we've journalized transactions, remember a journal is sort of a chronological listing of, of the events that are happening in a business. Once we journalize them, then we're ready to, to post them to the T account or, or sometimes it's called to the ledgers. Uh, the ledger is where we post them by account so that we can get a balance for each account. So really the best way to do this is just to go start at the very first transaction where we debited cash 17,500 and we credited common stock 17,500. So we'll go down to the cash account. We'll label this transaction A and we'll debit cash 17,500. And then we'll go down to uh, sales commissions. No, I'm sorry, common stock. Label that A and record 17,000 credit 17,500. So really we don't have to think too hard. We're just transferring this entry down to the T accounts. So a debit here will be a debit down there. A credit here will be a credit down there. So for transaction B, we debited supplies 2300 and credited accounts payable 2300. So we'll go down to supplies, label it B, debit 2300. Uh, and then we'll go down to accounts payable. Label it B, credit 2300. Again, we're just taking this information and moving it down. So on transaction C, we debited cash 13,300 and credited sales commissions 13,300. So we'll go cash. 13,300, and then we'll credit sales commissions, 13,300. For D, we will debit rent expense 3,000 and credit cash 3,000. We'll label it D, debit rent expense 3,000, and then we'll go up to cash, we'll label that D, and we'll credit cash 3,000. For E, we have a debit to accounts payable of 1150 and a credit to cash of 1150. We'll go down to accounts payable, label E, 1150, go up to cash, label it E, do 1150. For F, we debit dividends 1800 and credit cash 1800. So for F, debit dividends 1800, and then label it F and credit cash 1800. For G, we're gonna debit automobile expense 1500, debit miscellaneous expense 400, and credit cash 1900. So we'll go down to automobile expense, We'll do 1500. We'll go down to miscellaneous expense, also labeled a G, 400 on the debit side, and then we'll go up to cash and we'll credit 1900. For H, we'll debit office salaries 2800 and credit cash 2800. We'll go up to cash, credit that 2,800. Finally for I, we will debit supplies expense 1,050 and credit supplies 1,050.
All right, so now that we've done that, we're ready to find the balances of each of these accounts. So for cash, I'll add my debit, 17,500 plus 13,300 minus my credits. So I'm left with $20,150 in cash. The reason I started on the debit side is because the debit side appears to be bigger than the credit side. And what we're trying to do is find the balance by taking the larger side and subtracting the smaller side. For supplies, we'll take 2,300 minus 1,050, which should be 1,250. Now here on accounts payable, we see that the credit side is bigger. So we'll subtract 1,150 from 2,300. Uh, and that will leave us with what, 1150. Common stock, there was only one transaction. So we already know the balance. Same with dividends, sales commissions, rent expense, and all the other expenses. So that should be all of our balances. We can check our work to make sure we didn't make a mistake. And we're all good. So now that we have the balances of each of the accounts, we're prepared to create a trial balance. So the trial balance will be listed in the exact same order that these T accounts are listed. So our asset accounts are first, followed by our liabilities, followed by our common stock account, then our dividends account, then our revenues and all of our expenses. They're always listed in that same order. So now again, we just have to transfer over this information, these balances to the trial balance. So we'll start with the cash account has a debit balance of $20,150. So I'll come here, I'll put cash, 20,150. I just have to do this for each account. So I'll scroll up. Next is supplies, which has a debit balance of 1250. After supplies, accounts payable, which has a credit balance of 1150. The credit balance we'll put over here on the right side. After, let's see, after accounts payable, we have common stock, which has a credit balance of 17,500. After common stock, we'll have dividends, which has a debit balance of 1,800. After dividends, we'll have sales commissions with a credit balance of 13,300. And we're going to have all the expenses. So rent expense with a debit balance of 3000 Office salaries expense with a debit balance of 2800 Automobile expense with a debit balance of 1500 Supplies expense with a debit balance of 1,050. And finally, miscellaneous expense with a debit balance of 400. Now we're gonna add up both sides and make sure they balance. So I'll start with my debit side. That adds up to 31,950. And then my credit side. Adds up to 31,950. The fact that those two balance mean I'm probably on the right track. Check my work. I'll see that I am. But finally, um, it wants us to have some information here. So the first one is uh, determine the following, the amount of total revenue recorded in the ledger. So we only had one revenue uh, transaction and that was up here where we uh, collected cash for, uh, for sales commissions. That's our revenue account. Um, so we can see that our, our total revenue 
was 13,300. Our total expenses are all right here. So I'll have to add those up. We had 3,000 in rent expense plus 2,800. In office salaries expense plus 1,500. In automobile expense plus 1,050. In supplies expense plus 400 in miscellaneous expense. So total expenses of 8,750. The next question asks, what's the amount of net income? Well, we know that net income is just our revenue minus our expense. And then in the last question says, uh, determine the increase or decrease in the retained earnings for August. Remember retained earnings uh, goes up with net income and down with dividends. So, uh, in this case, we had a net income of 4,500 and dividends of 1,800. So the total increase then would be the 4,550, sorry, in net income minus the 1,800 in dividends. So our net, our, our uh, retained earnings should have got up by 2,750 during that month. And that should do it. So I hope that was helpful to you. Uh, as always, don't be afraid to, uh, to reach out. You can call or text or email and I will do my best to help you. Have a great day.